challenge with these type of industrial byproduct is the variation in their composition and material property from look different for, uh, at different locations okay so depending on the raw product using which we are getting this byproduct the there is a variation in the content of the uh, you can say silica or calcium or the uh, compositions vary from the location to location okay so that is the one of the challenge with the use of the industrial byproducts that we have to be like clear with the content of the byproduct and how it will affect the overall strength development another thing that with some of the byproduct is they are not good in durability aspect okay Another challenge with this, uh, your industrial byproduct is their availability at different location. At some location, one type of byproduct is available in abundance, but another type of product is not easily available. Then another challenge with uh, this byproduct is their transportation. Okay, so and one of the most important thing with these are the standard guidelines. So now in the uh, revised this concrete design mixed design code, so they have added these things which was not there in 2009 mixed design code. Okay, uh, concrete mixed design using this industrial byproducts or uh, supplementary cementitious materials. Then another thing which uh, we call uh, we use in green concrete is the recycled aggregates that recycled aggregates can be the byproduct of the production industry or it can be the byproduct of the construction demolition okay so again one of the biggest challenge with the recycled aggregates its property it varies a lot so at uh, one location you can have a very good recycle aggregate but at some other location you may not have that good recycle aggregate the performance of the concrete which we make using the recycle aggregate varies depending on the way it was produced like whether it is the byproduct of your production industry if that is a byproduct of the production industry still we can say keep some uniformity will be there in the properties of the aggregate but if it is a byproduct of the construction demolition so a lot of variation is there and one of the challenge with this is to achieve a uniform results with this uh, construction demolition recycled aggregates but if we are able to use this recycled aggregates it helps in disposing of this construction demolition waste that is another challenge which we can address if we are able to successfully use this recycled aggregates in our this concrete okay okay so porous concrete uh, i already started this okay so this is basically your no fine or very less fine concrete. The issue with this is like we cannot design this for high strength. Okay, so the application of this type of concrete is in low traffic area, like your parking lots, residential streets, then low stress application areas. Over the time, what happens? These voids in permeable concrete can be clogged with sediments or debris while uh, while infiltrate, uh, infiltration of the water through it so regular maintenance of permeable concrete is required so for this we use your vacuum sweeping or pressure washing okay. these are required for the regular maintenance of the permeable concrete otherwise after a few uh, 
uh, after few days or few years the all the ports can get clogged and it will not solve the purpose for which it has been designed okay but with the use of permeable concrete the issue of rainwater harvesting and this urban uh, your this infiltration issue that can be resolved then we have this another uh, type of concrete that is cool concrete these concretes are also known as high albedo or reflective concrete and it is produced by incorporating the minerals with high solar reflectance into concrete mix or we do the surface coating in the on the concrete okay. so what happens we add this reflective pigments in concrete or we apply the coating on the surface of the concrete so when we uh, these uh, these have the property that it reflects the solar radiation back into the atmosphere okay it does not absorbs the heat this in turn leads to the cool concrete so when lot uh, large portion of the solar radiation is reflected back into the atmosphere the surface of the concrete remains cooler compared to the traditional concrete so this helps in maintaining the comfort and temperature within that building which ultimately helps in reducing the energy consumption associated with the cooling of the building also the cool concrete what happens the surface will not get heated so the uh, cracks because of the thermal stresses that will not develop which will again enhance the durability of the concrete also there are uh, there are also challenges and limitations along with this type of concrete one is the initial higher cost compared to your traditional concrete but if we compare with the long term benefits of the reduced energy consumption and improved durability this can offset the initial investment another issue with this type, uh, type of concrete is that dirt dust if it gets accumulated on the surface over the period of time its effectiveness the solar reflective effectiveness will get reduced okay consequently its cooling effect will also get reduced so we have to maintain the concrete so that we get the performance as desired another thing with this type of concrete is what type of material we are using as a solar reflectance so this type of concrete is expected to expected to come in practice in construction industry offering new opportunities for mitigation the urban heat island effect and promoting the sustainable urban development then we have high performance concrete these have uh, uh, uhpc that is ultra high performance concrete has emerged as a promising sustainable material in construction industry offering significant advantage over the traditional concrete these are highly engineered fiber reinforced cementitious composite characterized by its exceptional mechanical property high strength and durability so this uhpc 
is generally defined as concrete with a compressive strength greater than 150 MP. Okay, the compressed uh, concrete which has compressive strength greater than 150 MP, they come under this UHPC concrete. So they are typically made with high strength steel fibers, sand, cement, flash, and large volume of super plasticizers, that is silica fume, and a very low amount of water, that is up to 0 0.20. One of the key benefits of this UHPC, it's superior strength. Okay, this UHPC exhibits significantly higher strength than the conventional concrete, which in turn help us to design thin structures and in turn, uh, which in turn leads to lighter structure. Okay. When we can design the structure thinner, obviously we are uh, saving some on uh, something on the materials as well. Okay, which again will lead to the environmental effect another advantage of uhpc is its potential to improve the energy efficiency okay. these have enhanced durability they are they are very good in resistance to wear corrosion and chemical attacks which in turn extends the lifespan of the structure, reducing the maintenance required. Okay, so UHPC concrete they are they have very less amount of permeability. That they are they having very low permeability. They are more compact, which helps in resistance to wear and the this chemical attacks. Then they are again very good in uh, fire resistance, which again contributes to safer and the more resilient structure. Due to its high strength and low permeability, UHPC can effectively insulate buildings and min minimize heat transfer, reducing the energy consumption for heating and cooling purpose. Okay. So, although there are many benefits of UHPC, there are several challenges as well one is the high cost okay so the high cost of uhpc is because of its composition okay and the expertise required to design this kind of concrete then the limited availability of the materials used to design this uhpc concrete for this, we need specialized fibers and admixtures and fine aggregate, which can be challenging to get in some locations. Then we have this self-healing concrete. So this self-healing concrete is a technology which has the potential to heal the crack once the crack develops okay so they have the capability to fix the crack on its own also not only it heals the cracks but also it recovers the mechanical strength completely that was that the structure was designed for before the cracking So this type of concrete is achieved using different methods. One of the approach is bacterial based healing. So in this, what we do, we use the bacteria. We, what we do, we introduce the bacteria while the mixing of the concrete itself. Okay. So when the cracks appear over the period of the time, these bacteria get activated and produce the calcium carbonate which fills the voids and seals the crack then 
another approach is also there for designing the self healing concrete that is micro capsules in this small capsules containing the healing agents are embedded within the concrete when crack forms these capsules releases the agents to seal the damage okay but they are not that effective as the bacterial based self healing concrete one of the challenge with the uh, the self healing concrete is the application in the real world so so far whatever study has been done that has been done in the laboratory and in, at the laboratory level we have achieved the successful output but still the long term performance and reliability of these kind of concretes is questionable at it is as it is not uh, used in the real world application another innovative technology in practice these days is the 3d print concrete in this a computer controlled robotic system is involved to deposit the layer of concrete material following the predetermined digital design okay so in this what we do we give the data to the computer system of the desired design and it uses the machine to print the concrete like we can see here so with this we can have the desired shape with the minimal wastage which again helps in the more efficient use of the material ultimately leading to the sustainable construction so this technology also reduces the need for the manual labor and the form work which again saves lot of time this allows for the greater design freedom customization and the potential for innovation architectural design that optimize structural performance and material use so the challenges associated with the 3d printed technologies is the development and refinement of the 3d printing system materials used another challenge is the development of the codes or standard guidelines to ensure the quality durability of the structure then we have the photocatalytic concrete this is another innovative technology in construction industry that incorporates the photocatalytic materials such as titanium dioxide into the concrete mix or surface coating so what we do basically we incorporate the material into the concrete that has the capability to absorb the sunlight and catalyze the catalyze chemical reactions so these materials when exposed to sunlight generate reactive oxygen species that can break down the 
various pollutants such as nitrogen nitrogen oxides volatile volatile organic compounds and particulate matters ultimately improving the air quality this photocatalytic uh, catalytic concrete can also decompose the organic matter and dirt creating a self cleaning surface these can also break down the organic matter like algae mold dirt that deposit on the surface of the concrete which again it uh, helps in the self which again can uh, we can say that maintains the appearance and the aesthetic of the concrete structure reducing the need for the regular cleaning and maintenance there are also some challenges with this that the effectiveness of the photocatalytic concrete relies on the sunlight or the uv radiation so if there's a if there's a shaded area or low sunlight is there for the long period these will be not that much effective by utilizing the locally available materials again we can reduce the carbon footprints and we can proceed towards the sustainable construction practice so like in this again we have different heads one is your this natural aggregates so if we source the locally available aggregates it will reduce the transportation cost and the energy consumption and this thing like if we can use the recycle aggregates that is the by product of the construction waste or the industry that again reduces the overall carbon consumption in the concrete uh, production process then the availability of the local fibers that can be natural fibers or uh, by uh, or fibers from the local industries okay. it will enhance the performance of the concrete in terms of strength in terms of durability and then this alternative binders okay so locally produced line natural hydraulic lines or locally sourced geopolymers can partially or fully replace the portland cement okay so geopolymer itself is a concrete made of industrial byproducts with some activators in which we can replace the cement with the geopolymers benefit of using the local material is it reduces the transportation related emissions energy consumptions and overall carbon footprint the use of local material encourages the reuse and repur repurposing of the locally available materials including waste products and by products of the industry it supports the local suppliers and industry which can help the help boost the local economy create job encourage the development of sustainable construction practice also the local materials are well suited to the local environmental con condition resulting in structures that are more resilient and better adapted to the specific challenges and needs of that region
then we have another type of cement that is your limestone calcinated clay cement also called as lc3 this is a new type of cement that is based on a blend of limestone and calcinated clay this is a novel environmentally uh, environmentally friendly cementitious material that has gained lot of attention as an alternate to the traditional portland cement in concrete construction industry basically this is the blend of clinker clay limestone which results in the reduced carbon emission and energy consumption during the production of the conventional cement okay and another advantage is like clay is available in abundance in the environment uh, uh, in uh, around our surroundings okay so this has we uh, in this like we replace the composition in the traditional cement with up to 30% of the calcinated clay also because of the utilization of the locally available raw material like your limestone and clay the transportation cost is reduced emission is reduced the calcination of clay is done at the lower temperature okay then the clinker production which in turns again reduces the energy consumption and the carbon dioxide emission along with this reduced uh, carbon dioxide emission there is another advantage of this type of uh, cement is that it exhibits the similar or even better mechanical and durability properties compared to a traditional cement the benefit of this is like reduced carbon emission energy consumption during the production it can utilize the locally available raw material which exhibits the similar or even better mechanical and durability properties compared to a traditional portland cement and also it addresses the growing demand for cement by utilizing the abundant and underexploited clay resources surrounding us but one of the challenge with this is like proper testing characterization is required for the mixed design to ensure that the desired property and durability requirement are met as we are using this cement with the locally available material then another technology is the insulated concrete foams so insulated concrete foams are cast in place concrete walls that are sandwiched between layers of insulation material okay, here you can see so these are the concrete walls sandwich concrete walls which is laid with the insulation material in between so this type of construction is also known for its high strength and energy efficiency so when there is a insulation layer in between it provides high energy efficient building envelope reducing the heating and cooling load and lowering the energy consumption for the building occupants another advantage of this type of concrete is it provides excellent noise insulation reducing the transmission of exterior noise and creating a quieter indoor environment also because of this core it has excellent fire resistance property reducing the risk of, risk of fire spreading from one room to another room but the one of the thing which we have to consider while designing this is the upfront cost of this type of construction okay the initial construction cost is higher compared to the traditional construction 
because of the expensive form work required for this kind of construction. Another thing is like specialized installation techniques are required, which normal labor cannot do. But if we see this in terms of long term cost saving, we can say that in terms of energy and the maintenance cost. These are these perform far better compared to your traditional concrete structures. Another thing which we should focus on the waste derived fuels. So if we replace our traditional fossil fuels with the waste derived fuels, this can significantly reduce the greenhouse gas emission, contributing to the climate change mitigation effort and promoting more sustainable construction industry. A lot of research is required in this area, like where we can replace the traditional fossil fuel with the fuels derived from the industrial waste. This in terms will also help us to divert the waste material from landfilling, promoting the more circular economy and efficient use of resources. So carbon capture utilization and storage. This is another emerging technology which aims to mitigate the climate change by capturing the carbon dioxide. Okay, so in this, what we do, we capture the carbon dioxide emission from the cement production or any other industry, preventing them to enter the atmosphere. Whatever carbon dioxide is produced, we capture it. That either we can utilize for the various applications, like your production of chemicals or plastic, or some other kind of uh, in, uh, this production industry, or what we can do, we can store this. Okay, we can store, uh, we can capture this and store this in a geological formation that is a permanent storage, preventing its contribution to the climate change. So, this process basically involves the separation and capture of CO2 from the emission source that can be your cement industry, power industry, or any other industrial facility. Okay. So this captured carbon dioxide, this can be utilized in the production of the chemicals plastic and along with that it, it is used in the enhanced oil recovery process and cultivation of the algae for biofuels, biofuels or bioproducts. And whatever remaining CO2 is that we can store in a geological formation, such as deep saline aquifers, depleted oil and gas reservoirs, or mineral unminable coal seams. There we can store this. One thing uh, we have to take care. So these storage sites should be carefully selected and monitored to ensure that the long term contamination of CO2 and to prevent the leakage of the CO2 into the environment. Okay, so regular monitoring is required. Another thing is that we can electrify the construction equipment. This again will reduce the fossil fuel consumption, ultimately reducing the carbon emission in the industry and also the noise levels. But the issue with this is like we are still in the process of having like advanced batteries
and we have this nanotechnology enhancing concrete nanotechnology which enhances the concrete properties so in this what we do we use the carbon nanotubes in into concrete which enhances its mechanical strength durability and resistance to cracking this again acts as a reinforcing agent bridging the micro cracks and preventing their propagation resulting in a more robust and sustainable concrete while this technology offers significant advantage but the challenge with this remains the cost effectiveness and the large scale production another area in which lot of research is going on is the structural health monitoring okay, so in this what we do we embed the sensors in the concrete structure for the continuous monitoring, monitoring of its stress strain temperature variation and the real time data of the structural integrity and if there are any distress we get the early warning okay so with this type of monitoring what happens the regular maintenance required for the structure that is known in advance and if there is any initial uh, early warning of the potential issue we rectify that at the early stage itself leading to the prolonged life of the structure which again will lead to the sustainable practice reducing the carbon emission for the new construction regular monitoring of the structure will help in the longer life span of the structure as time to time required maintenance at the potential area is done when we talk about the sustainability the construction industry will play a crucial role in achieving the sustainable future if you are able to achieve the sustainability in construction industry we will be able to like reduce the carbon output carbon emission but the challenge with this is the technical understanding of the subject then economic aspect social aspect integration of these practices into industry that is one of the uh, like these are the challenges with the sustainable construction practice then the technical challenges we have is in, in terms of material performance the use of new materials such as supplementary cementitious material alternative binders can significantly impact the performance of the concrete like it depends on what type of cementitious material you are using and the binders it will impact the performance of the concrete then the durability concern then lot of uh, ongoing research is going on which it's uh, which is still not transferred to the industry okay for that extensive testing and analysis is required to understand the long term behavior of this material then issue with the curing uh, like since we are using the new type of materials we have to understand the mix properties curing procedures and then the quality control aspect one of the most important thing while considering the sustainable construction practices your economic challenge initial cost is high okay so if we see uh, if we compare with the traditional practices your initial investment is higher in these kind of like sustainable construction practice again the use of new type of materials and advanced technology 
will contribute to the initial cost. So if we compare the budget, like these are not feasible for the small construction projects. Okay, but if we compare the feasibility of this initial cost in terms of the volume of the construction project over the period of time, it justifies the initial investment. Another challenge is the market acceptance. Then in terms of social challenge, there's a lack of awareness and education for the current trends. One is the adoption of this sustainable construction practice requires skilled workers who are not very much familiar with the new materials and technologies. So we have to train them. Another thing is industry collaboration is required with the educational institution. A lot of work is going on, on, going on at the institute level only, which is not transferred to the industry. Okay. So we need a proper collaboration between the industry and the academia. And then time to time, this certificate programs should be done to train the workers for this changing uh, construction practice. Again, existing building codes and standards not address the sustainable construction practice. So one has to focus on developing the building codes and standards for this changed practice in the construction. Then promoting and utilizing the green building certification programs such as LEED or CREDA, which can help the gap between the regulation and sustainable practice. So these innovative technologies and practices are transforming the concrete construction industry, offering new opportunities to enhance the durability, sustainability, and efficiency. While the challenges remain, ongoing research and development and collaboration among industry stakeholders, realizing the full potential of these innovation and shaping a more sustainable and resilient built environment for the future. By embarrassing these advancements, the construction industry can contribute to more environmentally responsible and economically viable future. Okay, so I'll stop here and not continue further. Thank you all. If there's any if there's any questions you can discuss. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, everybody are asking for the PPT. Okay, I'll share. I'll share uh, to uh, Seth and he can share with uh, others. Okay, ma'am. So everyone, if you have any doubts, you can feel free to share them. Okay, thank you very much. So I have another uh, this uh, seminar uh, from 3.15. So I'll take okay. leave. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful session.
I request all the participants to fill the feedback form.